All right, people, we're going to call this one The Art of War Part 3. And listen, these are just little tools that, you know, you build up. Don't look at this stuff. I know there's a lot of people getting involved in this, and it seems overwhelming because there's, you think there's so much to learn. But you'd be amazed at what you can do with just, you know, just a few th things if you know how to use them well. You could really do some damage and, and make a lot of things go away by just knowing a few key tools that you can use. So a lot of this stuff will start to overlap, lot, you know, some of the different videos I did. Because uh, I, I, I taught a lot of engineers uh, when I was in the music business, and I actually had students I, that I taught uh, how, to, how to, you know, do uh, recording and production work. And... I learn repetition. I mean, that's how I learn. You know, I, I got to learn something over and over and over again. Somebody's got to repeat it to me till it gets beaten in my head and I just understand it. You know, so that when somebody opens their mouth, I go, oh, he's going to say this next or he's going to say that next. And when you get it to that point, then you know it. And that's the point you need to be to. It's sort of like, you know, uh, you know a martial arts fighter. He could study moves, you know, step here, step there, do this move, do that move. But he's got to get it down to a point where when he's in a fight, he don't have to think about that stuff. It's just natural. It just comes to him. And that's what this stuff is. When you get sick of hearing me say things to you to you, because it's just re repetition, then you got it. Because then you could use it when you need it in a court or talking to these, you know, these these criminal bureaucrats that are, you know, that they claim you're good, that, that are, they're, they're claiming that they're your government, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so you got to get it down to that point. So here's some, I think, get some really useful tools in here. You can incorporate this stuff in your affidavits, uh, and you can, tell you, you can knock a lot of cases out with this basic stuff. And uh, so let's start moving, uh, start moving through it a little bit of this. Let's call, we're going to call it the, uh, the rule of, of. <laughs> now, that of word is a very powerful word, and it's being used to deceive you in a lot of ways, and we're going to run over that now. Now, this is the definition of things in the Bouvier's uh, Law Dictionary. By this word is understood every object except man, which may become an active subject of right of a man or woman. So a thing is of a man or woman. It belongs to a man or woman. Uh, so things, things are property, all right? So things are property. They're of a man or woman. Things are not the man or woman. They're, they're just items that... A property of the man or, or woman. And let's look at Pennsylvania. And this is the same for your states. You're going to have, you know, uh, Georgia and you're going to have state of Georgia. So this is Pennsylvania. So all Pennsylvania is, it's a reference to a ge geographic landmass. It's the physical earth. It's the dirt. <laughs> okay. It's just a reference to a, you know, someone drew something on a map and they're calling this the physical geographic landmass known as Pennsylvania. So it's a thing. It's an it. It's it's a landmass. A landmass has no rights. Things don't have rights. Okay, Th fictional things don't have rights. It, it has no rights. The land has no laws, statutes, no ordinances, no codes. It's a thing, and things don't take actions. You know, they don't they don't move against you. They don't bring actions. Let's look at the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and let's highlight this word of Pennsylvania. And we're going to hit this over and over again. If you're of something, you cannot be the thing that you're of. You're of it. So the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, it's just a service corporation. It's a corporation masquerading as a government. It's a corporation providing government services. And sadly, many times at the at the barrel of a gun. You know, uh, but and that's why we do this stuff is to try and separate us from these corporations. You know, uh, hey, listen, if they want to have their little party with their own citizens and their own uh, entities, that's great. We just want to be left out of their little party. So really, they're just a service corporation. Like I said, masquerading as a government. I said a corporation has no rights. It's an it. <laughs> it's an it. It's not a, not a man or woman. It doesn't do things. And it only has duties and obligations. It's set forth in its corporate charter that was created by public servants. So public servants created a corporate charter for this company known as the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Like I said, it's the same for your state. They're all the same. And it's the same for uh, other countries. You're going to see the same thing. You're going to see these, you know, something of. Well, if you're of it, you can't be it. You're not the thing. I'm going to show you how they're deceiving you with, those, with that word of. 
Uh, now listen, public servants never, ever get to determine what a man or woman's rights are. <laughs> they can only deal with persons under their jurisdiction. I mean, they didn't create you, they don't get to control you. And he said public servants never, ever get to determine what is done with a man or woman's property. They're, they're public servants. That's not their property. Okay, and so they've sort of flipped this on its head where they're, tr- they're actually treating you as their uh, their subjects. Like they're, they're acting like the kings and, and you are the subject. Now look, a man or woman's property is never on the service corporation's land. So I have properties in, on Pennsylvania, okay. Uh, my properties on Pennsylvania are not on the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania's land. I'm not on their land, okay. Uh, but they're conflating the two. They want you to believe that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania are the same thing. Now look, just because some public servant drew lines on a map around your property and my property does not give them jurisdiction over your property. They can draw lines around anything they want. <laughs> Doesn't mean they get to control it. So, and as Steve Emerson has constantly stated, listen, if I can't do it to you, then you can't do it to me. Okay, it's pretty simple. If I went and drew a line around the service corporation doing business as the township of Aston's municipal building, that's the, the t- little town I live in, okay, Aston. Uh, so if I drew, you know, a line, uh, a circle around their, their municipal building, do I now have jurisdiction over that building because I say it does? No. Well, well that's what they're doing with you. Somebody drew lines around your borough, your township, your, your state. Somebody drew lines on a map around your property and they're trying to claim because you're in their lines that you're, they have some kind of jurisdiction or authority over your property. And they don't. All right, we're going to quickly cover some jurisdictional stuff too. Jurisdiction is only established by proving personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction. Now, a court needs actually both things, and we'll hit this again in here. A court needs both things, personal jurisdiction and subject matter jurisdiction in a matter. And there's ways we're going to go through quickly how courts attempt to get that kind of jurisdiction and how they what they need to get certain types of jurisdiction. Uh, so somebody drawing a line around your property doesn't give them jurisdiction. I mean, it, it's just a ridiculous claim. When you really start to look at what, how things work, it's ridiculous. But they've dumbed the people down to a point where they, they conflate the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to the geographic landmass known as Pennsylvania. Now, look, like I said, someone can only claim personal jurisdiction over you if they can prove you're a subject of theirs. Uh, you know, if you claim that you're a citizen of theirs or you're, you state that you're under their control in some way. You know, they, they just can't make you, they, they just can't claim jurisdiction over you because they said so or because somebody else told them they could say so. Like the legislature, the legislature can't determine who's got jurisdiction over you. The, these are ridiculous claims that, that have been uh, allowed to exist. Because, uh, you know, through schooling, through uh, media, through your family, uh, we've all been indoctrinated and dumbed down. And so these are some of the tools that are going to help you break away from this stuff. Now, look, someone can only claim subject matter jurisdiction if they have an interest in you, the man or woman, or of your property, if they've got an interest in your property. Without that, there's no subject matter jurisdiction involving anything with you, the man or woman, or your property, which is your land and your home, okay? Now, just because I live, like I said, just because I live on the geographic region known as Pennsylvania, it does not give the service corporation doing business as the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania personal and subject matter jurisdiction over me. In other words, your location does not grant jurisdiction to a service corporation. Doesn't work like that, you know? Just because I'm physically located on Pennsylvania, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, it's a whole separate entity. It's got nothing to do with me unless I choose to be a part of it. Listen, if you want to be a part of these corporations, and some people do, they, they want to live in the matrix. You know, they, they want to be in the matrix because they're so, it's easier for them to be in the matrix and it's easier for someone to call the shots for them. And there's some people like that. They want to be part of that. I'm not one of them. And I'm sure if you're in my Telegram group and watching my videos and on my website, I'm pretty sure you're not one of them either. You know, I, I, I'm a man, I want to live my own life, I won't be left alone. So, your physical location does not grant any man, woman, or service corporation jurisdiction over you. 
doesn't work like that. We, we're going to, so we're covering, that's not how jurisdiction works. You know, just because I live, you know, uh, the, the, the church down the street, just because they would say that I'm in their parish, doesn't give them jurisdiction over me. And I'm sure their parish, they basically drew lines around my house and some other houses in the neighborhood. And they're stating, the church would state that that's their parish and that I'm in their parish. But just because I'm in their parish doesn't grant them any rights or jurisdiction over me. Well, that's the same thing with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania or the Township of Aston or the County of Delaware. Just because they drew lines around my property does not make me their subject, does not make me their citizen. Okay, you don't you don't make people citizens and subjects by drawing lines around them. Doesn't work like that. Now, man and woman, another entity. Listen, you're born with no papers attached to you. So that this whole birth certificate stop. Please stop this nonsense with the birth certificate and the certificate of live birth. I, listen, you want to discuss that stuff? Go to another group and discuss that stuff, and come back when you got something relevant that's going to help somebody. Because I, 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 I'm unaware of anybody that's won cases with their birth certificate. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I just don't know any. And I, when you start using that kind of stuff, they're they're gonna they're gonna steamroll you because they're gonna know that you, you don't know what you're doing. Because instead of dealing with birth certificates and certificate of live births, smack them on the obvious. Who are you people? Where did you get authority to tell me to do anything? Do I have a contract with you? No? Leave me alone. I, I could do that very simply in a few words. I don't need to go worry about getting a birth certificate that I'm not a party to. I, I didn't sign that birth certificate. Uh, I wasn't there when they created that birth certificate. That birth certificate's got no control over my life. It's meaningless. No one could ever bring that birth certificate in court and claim that it gives them any kind of authority or jurisdiction over me. And I'll guarantee you're never, ever going to see someone claim that. I'm never going to be in court and no one's ever going to say, Mr. Fatchola, we got your birth certificate. We own you, sir, or we control you. Bull. Not going to happen, guys. It's it's a meaningless document. And, and like I said, uh, I'm here to try and pull people out of the rabbit hole. I don't want to push them in the rabbit hole. And if you're going to go down this secured party creditor stuff and birth certificates. Listen, do what you want. Uh, th- th- you know, this is the this is the beauty of being free. You have you can make choices. Just don't bring it in my group. I, I just don't don't want to see it in there. I don't want that stuff in there. I don't want to confuse people. Uh, listen, we're doing things that I know work, that I've seen work. Over and over I've seen work. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole and screw it up and because and, you're going to confuse people. So people are going to look at this stuff and they're going to start fragmenting, you know, which one do I do? Do I do both at the same time or do this one? Like I said, you want to do that stuff? Please go do it in another group. Don't do not do it in my group. Uh, listen, uh, remember we're talking about of. If you're of something, you're not the thing, okay? If you, a man or woman, or an it, which means a corporation, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, are of something, then you and the it, the corporation, cannot be the thing itself. So the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can't be Pennsylvania. Can't be. They're two separate things. I, I'm of my parents, of my mother and my father. If I'm of them, I can't be them. I'm not my mom. I'm not my dad. So if I'm of it, I can't be it. So you got to separate the two things out of your mind. The physical location where you live and the corporate entity claiming that because they drew lines around your property that they somehow have control over it or jurisdiction over you. Nonsense, okay? So the Commonwealth, like I said, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is not Pennsylvania. They're, they're two separate entities. Uh, you know, they're, they're two separate its. They're its. And its don't have rights and its don't do things. Its don't file suits. And its can't have rights violated and it can't be damaged. There's no way I can damage the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's like me damaging Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. It it can't be done. So then how does my physical location in Pennsylvania tie me to the service corporation doing business as the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? It doesn't. And the same thing with your local township. How does my uh, physical location on the geographic region, the landmass known as Aston, How does that tie me to the township of Aston's ordinances and their codes? It doesn't. Just because the township of Aston drew a a circle around uh, my area, and they're saying, well, I'm in that area, everybody drew a circle, it doesn't give them rights. 
It, I don't have contracts with these people. I'm not their property. They didn't create me and they don't get to control me. And this is the stuff they don't want you to know. If they didn't create you, because remember, they create citizens and they create residents and they create taxpayers and a host of other things. If they didn't create you, they can't control you. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the Township of Aston is not my creator. So the Township of Aston doesn't get to tell me to do squat. Doesn't matter what the, the towns of Aston tells me to do. They've, they've got no authority over me. They got no authority over my property. They never took a dime out of their pocket to purchase my property. I did that. And that's another thing with a loyal totals, uh, with a loyal total, uh, titles. I'll get it out. A loyal titles. <laughs> Say that fast 10 times. Uh, listen, uh, my title could be written on a piece of toilet paper. If I got proof that I, it's my property, we're done. They, they, I don't care could care less about their titles or certificate of titles or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. If I got a piece of paper and I, it's my property, I paid for it, I, I don't care what this certificate of title crap is. It doesn't matter. It, it's either my property or it's not. And, and when I claim it by way of in an affidavit, somebody's got to step forward and challenge me by way of affidavit that I'm wrong, that they have superior claim to my property. Because when I state an affidavit, I have superior claim to my property, there's no one going to be able to challenge me on that unless they have a bill of sale that they purchased it from me or from somebody else. Because if I didn't sell it to them, it's not their property and they have no control over it. Now, factually, listen, they are two separate things. You know, one's a geographical landmass and the other is a service corporation that exists only on a piece of paper. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They got a Dun & Bradstreet number, like most of these states and cities and corporations, and they actually have Dun & Bradstreet numbers. They're registered as businesses because they're businesses. They're not governments. They're businesses that are masquerading as governments that are many times providing services at the end of a barrel of a gun, basically. Hey, pay us or we're going to do this bad thing to you. You know, that, boy, that sounds like a great company, doesn't it? That's a lot of freedom of choice there, huh? Pay us or we're going to do this horrible thing to you. But but that's how they work. They work like crime families, which uh, which I, I actually view them as. I, I believe them to be crime families. You don't strong arm somebody to make them do something or take people's property that's not yours. These are crime families here. And the sad part is they're in cahoots with the Bar Association who's doing all this stuff. The bar's running the whole game. Don't kid yourself. The Bar Association's the puppet masters. And these boroughs and townships and you know, states and whatever, they're, they are pawns for the Bar Association, the legal society who's running all this. So, the, the listen, the legal society, which is the Bar Association pretty much, has conflated these two its. You know, the land and the corporation, as if they're the same thing. And we know that obviously they're not. Because people see Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they just automatically conflate it with Pennsylvania and they think anything laws, codes, or statutes that they see written under the common law, Pen- uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, they think, oh, the- these must apply to me because I'm- I live in Pennsylvania. When not knowing that they're, they're two separate entities. One's a piece of physical land <laughs> and one's a corporation that exists on a piece of paper. So once you start separating that in your mind, and, and when I first started doing this stuff, it took me a while to get to get sep- to actually get that separated in my mind, you know, to where I was uh, comfortable just uh, you know easily talking about it and, and being able to explain it. So just just wrap your mind around that that these are two separate entities, and just because that you just because you live on one doesn't mean the other one applies to you. And knowing that and using that, that's going to solve a lot of your problems. Like I said, all this is the same uh, for your local towns, your boroughs, your cities. It's it's all the same nonsense. You know, the, the township of Aston draws a circle around my area, and all of a sudden uh, they've they've granted themselves jurisdiction over me and authority, and they can tax me, and they can do this to me, and tell me I need permits to work on my own property. Nonsense. Total nonsense. Now let's look at some of the, uh, the, the things that they're doing with pleadings here. Uh, you know, the alleged plaintiff's pleading, the complaint, that's it, got to come from a party withstanding in a matter to establish subject matter jurisdiction. Because courts try to establish first uh, personal jurisdiction with process of service. That means a process server knocked on your door and said, you know, Mr. Fagioli, you're served. And he gives me a copy of the complaint and a copy of the summons. Okay, they don't send those things in the mail. 
you don't do process of service through the mail. So anything you got in the mail that wasn't service of process, you're involved in a kangaroo court, an administrative fake court. So in order for the court to get subject matter jurisdiction, they need both personal and subject matter jurisdiction. In order for them to get both, in order for them to get subject matter jurisdiction, there's got to be a party with standing in the matter. And standing means a man or woman's claiming that they, they, they you were a direct causation of violating one of their rights or you caused them harm or damage. You're the direct causation of harm or damage to that man or woman. So unless they can prove that with evidence, they don't have standing. We just talked about it earlier. Can I damage or harm the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Absolutely not. Uh, does the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have any rights for me, me to, uh, <laughs> to violate? No. No, it's, it's an it. It's don't have, and it, a thing, uh, an object, doesn't have rights. My speakers don't have rights. My lamp doesn't have rights. My chair doesn't have rights. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania doesn't have rights. And remember, like I said, a court must have both to proceed, both subject matter jurisdiction and personal jurisdiction. So there you go, right out the gate when you get this nonsense mailed to you. He's, he's being uh, trying to move against you in the name of a fiction. Some petty fogger shyster attorney filed some claim that he's, he's going to act and speak for a fiction. Go attack him. Go, go attack it right out of the gate. They don't have personal jurisdiction. They don't have subject matter jurisdiction. They don't have a lot of other stuff that's covered in, in the documents that are up on my site and, and the things we talk about in the Telegram group. Go after these people and go after the petty fogger shyster attorney and go after the petty fogger shyster judge. Okay, go bang them over the head with paperwork, go bang them over the head with complaints, and if need be, uh, go file state and federal criminal complaints against them, and if need be, go sue them in federal district court, and I don't want to hear that judges have immunity. Judges only have immunity when they're acting in compliance of the law. As soon as a judge steps out of compliance with the law, he loses his immunity. Not only does he lose his immunity, he could lose his insurance if you sue him the right way. Because the insurance company is going to look at him and go, Oh, sir, you're in non-compliance of the law. Why did you do that? Uh, I don't think we're going to cover you on this, or we're going to send your rates up, or I think we're going to drop you. You're too much of a liability. So, attack. Use these little tools that you're getting and, and go on the attack. Now, listen, it's also very important Legitimate legal proceedings are not initiated through the mail, like we we're talking about. They're initiated by process servers. Process servers are going to cost you 80 or 100 hours. So if I can initiate a legal proceeding through the mail, why would I just, you know, slap a cheap stamp on an envelope and send it to the other party? I could save myself, you know, uh, pretty much 100 bucks if I just could slap slap a, a stamp on an envelope and, and initiate a, a pre proceeding. I can't. That's not how proceedings are initiated. They're initiated through process servers. And guess what? Once a process server serves you, he goes back to the court and, and he has filed in the docket a, an affidavit of service stating that on this date at this time he gave you know Joe Smith service a process. And he does that under, uh, you know, sworn affidavit that, that he, he served the other party. Because that's the only way you can confirm that the documents were served to the other party. And in a lot of these uh, kangaroo court proceedings that you're seeing, that you're getting envelopes mailed to you, I would address the first one. I'd report it as mail fraud. And then if they do something stupid, like they were doing in, uh, you know, the Jeanette had a little hearing today. And uh, he's trying to, the judge is trying to say, he's fumbling all over the place. He, he can't explain, you know, he doesn't have answers for what she's asking him. And he claims he's going to set a hearing for next week. And, uh, uh, well, guess what I would do? If that mailing comes for a hearing next week, I never got it. Because there's no evidence that I received a regular mailing. And this is why you use process servers to make sure people get important legal documents. You don't do it through the mail. So if that court's dumb enough to send a hearing notice, I'm going to tear that up and I'm going to throw it in the trash and I'm not going to the hearing. Sorry, and if they, they challenge me, sir, uh, when do you have an affidavit of service? When was that served to me? Oh, oh, we didn't, we didn't send it. We didn't serve it by a, by a process server. We mailed it. 
Oh, I never got it. And, and oh, by the way, that's not how you serve legal documents. You don't serve legal documents through the mail. Once a proceeding's ongoing, then yeah, you could send motions back and forth and whatever, uh, you know, any other legal papers. Once the matter's underway, then you can start sending mail back and forth. But that's not how you initiate that proceeding. It's got to be initiated by a process server. I mean, this, these, these are just the basics, and these are the things they're hiding from you. They don't want you to know. So like I said, if you got something in the regular mail, meaning not from a process server, a guy didn't knock on the door and serve you, then you're in a kangaroo court. You're in an administrative court proceeding. And that proceeding right out of the gate is violating your God-given constitu constitutionally secured rights. And this is part of the way of how I stay out of their courts is I, uh, I call them on that. Hey, listen, this is, not a, uh, this is not a court of record. It's not a common law court. And if I came into your little proceeding, your little kangaroo court proceeding, well, gee, I would be waiving constitutionally secured rights. I'm sorry, I have no intention of waiving my rights ever. And not only would I be waiving my rights, uh, I would actually be contributing to crimes that you people have already committed against me, and now you want to continue to commit against me. No thank you. I'm going to stop the crime spree here. I'm not going to help you people commit crimes against me. So no. Uh, you know, and there's there's other things you could touch on as far as there's a lot of flaws in their paperwork. The, their entire documents that they're sending you in mail, the, the, these are these are fraud right out of the gate. You got a mail fraud complaint sitting right in your hands with that first document. Go use it. I've seen a tax matter disappear in Jersey with a mail fraud complaint, and guess what? It it, it disappeared in five days. That it was sent, and within five days the document came back to the woman, and her problem was solved. How about that? Because once you start involving outside parties, the United States Postal Service, well, gee, they, they don't have control over what the postal inspector is going to do. They can control their own little cocoon that they're living in, but they can't control what an outside party is going to do. So, you know, go bang them over the head right away with the uh, mail fraud complaint. And look, at, go knock at the... Go knock all this stuff out with the tools that you've been provided to you. You got uh, you got the documents up on the website. You got a uh, great information in the Telegram group, and there's some really helpful people in there. They, they, I mean, uh, Brett Fountain helps a ton of people, uh, and uh, like I said, a lot of the uh, the the, the a lot of the uh, uh, judicial complaints and the uh, the bar grievance stuff. That's that's from Brett and Randy Kelton. You know, they've been doing this stuff for years and because uh, they've seen they've seen it work. They, they've seen judges disappear and attorneys disappear and judges retire. <laughs> attorneys, attorneys suddenly gone and the matter disappear. So this is why we do these. You know, you, you with all this stuff, you attack the process. That's really what we're doing here. We're attacking the process because these guys never do things right. Never. They never, ever do it right. So before we want to talk about us, they want to talk about us right away. No, nah, we, don't, we don't need to talk about me yet. I got to discuss how you're doing what you're doing because this doesn't look like it's lawful what you're doing here. You got a lot of deficiencies and irregularities going on here. I'm going to need these addressed. And oh, by the way, I only deal with men and women by way of affidavits. I, I, don't, I don't answer hearsay. And, and I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to rebut somebody's hearsay allegation against me. If the other party wants to put it in an affidavit and submit it to me, I'll be happy to answer it. Until then, I, there's no dispute between us because uh, I'm here under penalty of perjury. And the guy on the other side, everything he's submitting and everything he's stating is complete hearsay. So, here's another thing they don't want you to know. Only the alleged party can bring a suit against you, and it must be in their own name, not the name of a service corporation doing business under a fictitious name. Okay, say I seen somebody do something to my neighbor's house, and I knew where the guy lived. I knew the guy who did it to my neighbor's house, and I went to my neighbor and I said, "Hey, John, listen, uh, that Chuck did this. I watched Chuck. You know, I watched Chuck spray paint your front door." And uh, my neighbor goes, ah, uh, uh, I'm just going to let it go. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to file anything. Uh, I'll probably just go talk to Chuck and see if I can, you know, resolve this and get him to pay for the door. So if, if he don't want to bring this suit, he wants to resolve it a different way. I can't go sue for my neighbor. I can't go sue for John in court. That's, the, they're the basics. It's got to be, the suit's got to be brought under the name of the party with standing in the matter. So now let's go down and look at what's going on here. 
So, an attorney couldn't even bring a suit against you for a real man or woman. So if I can't bring a suit for my neighbor John, neither can an attorney bring a suit for my, my neighbor John. Okay, he could represent my neighbor, John. He can give him legal advice, you know, things like that. He could talk to my neighbor and things like that. But he don't have any, he don't have any standing in the matter, this attorney. He's got no personal knowledge. So unless that complaint, if he's going to represent John, unless that complaint he draws up, the attorney's going to draw the pleading up, uh, which is the complaint, unless the complaint that's drawn up is verified and signed by my neighbor, John... Mr. Attorney, if he submits documents into this proceeding, he's committing fraud, uh, forgery, uh, and uh, barratry, uh, official oppression. There's a ton of crimes he's committing because he don't have standing to bring the matter. He don't have standing to sue. Like I said, he could, he could, he could do anything he wants legally for John, but then John's got to sign that document, that the, the, the pleading that's presented to the court. Because otherwise, what you have is an attorney, attorney who's got no jurisdiction over you, no authority over you, no legal standing in a matter. Meaning, the attorney's got his his rights weren't uh, he didn't he didn't his rights weren't violated, and he has not been harmed or damaged by anything you did. Okay, that we know that factually, and the, the killer for him, he's got no personal knowledge of the matter. So if he's submitting documents in a matter he's got no personal knowledge of. My God, he's committing crimes left and right. He he just submitted a false document that he don't have personal knowledge of in an attempt to harm and damage you. Uh, I'd go after his. I'd go. I'd go after his non-existent license to practice law. These guys don't have licenses to practice law. They got bar cards. Okay, uh, only the state can issue licenses for entities under their jurisdiction. The bar association is a private legal society. They issue bar cards. A bar card is a membership to the Bar Association. It's not a license to practice law. I've never seen a license to practice law. Okay, And no, not, neither do you need to have a license to practice law. Okay, You can be an assistance of counsel for anyone. You know, you go read the uh, Constitution, it says assistance of counsel. It doesn't say attorney or lawyer. It says assistance of counsel. Well, that can be your brother, that can be your neighbor, that can be anybody. It's up to you. Here's another thing. Yeah, let me, let me hit this again. Uh, listen, like I said, he can. We went through the advice, and he can, uh, you know, draw the thing up. But John's got to sign it. And look, in, in any matter, the plaintiff must appear. There needs to be a witness in every matter to get evidence on the record. The only way cases are decided are through the law and the facts on the record better known as evidence, okay? That's the only two ways that determine a case, all right? So if there's no witness and there's no real plaintiff in the matter, then the other side, they can't get evidence or facts on the record, can they? Because we know the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can't speak into the record. And we know if there's no witness... The attorney's not a witness. He can't be a witness, so he can't speak and get evidence and facts on the, uh, on the record. And even though he's claiming to act for a, probably a fictitious plaintiff, even though he's claiming to act for a fictitious plaintiff, uh, everything he files into that court or anything, any statements he makes, the attorney, he's got no personal knowledge of. So if he's got no personal knowledge of it, he can't, they're not facts that can go on the record. It's not evidence. So there's no facts or evidence on the other side to get into the record. They can't win. <laughs> Unless you have facts on the record, you can't win. You and I can get facts on the record by way of your affidavit. And the beautiful thing with your affidavit is uh, attorneys do things by motions. They, they got to move the court by motions. So they got a, a, a motion is a pleading to the, to the guy in the black dress. Pretty please, man in the black dress. Will you please, please grant my motion? But the judge had any, you know, he could deny a motion anytime he wants. You know, it doesn't matter. He just denies it because the motion's under him. It, 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 the motions are being run by the rules of civil procedure. They fall under the rules of civil procedure. So he, he could deny a motion anytime he wants. But a judge can't deny an affidavit. He said an affidavit, though it's still hearsay until it's actually put on the record, 
but there's easy ways to do that. But once you get that affidavit on the record, it's no longer hearsay. Uh, it is actually facts or evidence on the record. And until somebody wants to challenge that affidavit in a written affidavit form, rebutting your affidavit point for point. You got 10 points in your affidavit, you better get 10 rebuttals because anything that they leave off point-wise, they, they, they acquiesce to, they tacitly agree to. So if they, if they answer three things by affidavit and leave the other seven not answered, they just admitted to the other seven things without a fight. So if there's no witness, there's no facts, there's no evidence to go under the record. If there's no man or woman withstanding, there's no plaintiff. You know, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can't have rights damaged and they can't, uh, uh, they, they can't be harmed or damaged. So there's, there's no way they can get facts on the record or claim that they've been harmed or damaged. There, there's no way they can have subject matter jurisdiction. It, it's a ridiculous claim. Now, now think about it. If the attorney can't do it for a real man, he can't, like I said with my, my example with John, if he can't do things for my, my neighbor who's a real man, uh, they can't do it for a corporate fiction. You, know, you can't do it for a real man or woman. You can't do it for a, something that doesn't exist. You know, these are corporate fictions doing business as. That's why they have DBAs, doing business as names, doing business as Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, doing business as State of New Jersey. They're, they're of New Jersey. They're of Pennsylvania. They're not New Jersey. They're not Pennsylvania. So what they're doing pretty much is, is really all nonsense. And this is the matrix. You know, the matrix is a prison of the mind. You know, it's funny. I was just, just watched uh, uh, the matrix yesterday and uh, uh, Neo asked Morpheus at one point, you know, if you die in the matrix... Uh, you die in real life and uh, Morpheus to, to sort of paraphrase it Morpheus says uh, the body can't live without the mind so what the matrix is it's a prison of your mind and this is what's been done to us from from the get-go you know from you uh, very first time you step foot into a school you know you've been indoctrinated that's why I said the schools are not uh, institutions of learning uh, they're institutions of, of uh, I'm talking about grades 1 through 12. Listen, you go to college and learn whatever, you know, you want to get skills, that's great. But I'm talking about grades 1 through 12. These are not institutions of learning. They're institutions of indoctrination. And, you know, God bless the people that have pulled their kids out of these schools. Because uh, I think that's, you know, th these schools are uh, atrocious, what they do. Uh, I mean, uh, they got nurses. I, I, I know personal first-hand knowledge that they nurse that I know that I talk to that they they really actually wanted her to commit crimes against the, the, the students you know they, she they want them to to like it, it's to, to, to section them off in a room <laughs> you, know? you that's like kidnapping you can't do that <laughs> you, you don't have authority to do that and you don't make authority to make kids do things hey put your mask on do this do it these are crimes that they're doing. And this is, a lot of this is done out of ignorance because no one's challenged them on it. They've been allowed to skate for so long and they're, they become so full of themselves, they puff their chest out so much and they beat their chest because no one ever challenges them that they just believe that all of a sudden they've, they've garnered this authority. They've got this power over you because no one's challenging them. And their authority and their jurisdiction, just think of it as a big balloon. You know, big, big balloon and you got a pin and all it takes is one little prick to that balloon and you just took everything away from them you took their little balloon away from them or the big balloon away from them so it's all smoke and mirrors uh, so listen the, the, these are the tools listen the, the, these local municipalities and townships and counties these are crime families I mean these are not this is not the government that the forefathers had uh, envisioned and set up uh, this is a government that has been overthrown by the legal society, the Bar Association. They're the puppet masters in this whole thing that are calling all the shots. And a lot of the lower people you deal with, the borough people, the township people, the county people, these are button pushers that have no idea what they're doing. And if you've ever had conversations with them, after the second or third question, when you hear, oh, you got to talk to my attorney, oh, you got to talk to the attorney, as soon as you hear that, you've won, okay, because that man or woman just told you they have no idea what they're doing they can't they're make they've made claims against you but they can't even articulate their claims to you 
and they're trying to tell you to go talk to their their gardener or the guy who does their tile work. You know, it, it's it's ridiculous. You know, why would I go talk to your private contractor? Because that's what that attorney is for the county or the borough or the township. They're private contractors for a corporation. The corporation, the township of Aston, hires this attorney. They're separate entities. The, the attorney's not part of the corporation. He's a separate entity, okay? Just because somebody hired him, he doesn't get to do things to you. Okay, he doesn't get, he don't have any magic powers because a so-called government organization hired him. Uh, and this is why we walk them down this line of the bar grievances and the, uh, uh, the notice of claims and the state and federal criminal complaints and the suing the rear ends. And there's another uh, couple processes that I don't want to let out yet because uh, there's, there's somebody actually executing one now. And I want to see it through full. You know, want to see it to to the end. Uh, it's a way to actually stay out of the court uh, altogether and enforce the judgment, the claim, and that was supported by your affidavits. So, uh, you know, I, I can't release any names right now, but there's someone actually doing this process right now. So there are some things we're working at, working on behind the scenes, but I I, I don't bring things out unless I'm doing them myself. You know, I don't, I don't come out and tell somebody to do something unless I actually did it myself or I'm going to do it myself. So I don't bring out untested things or, you know, I don't bring out hearsay stuff that somebody else mentioned. It. If I did it, you know, and I, I'll, stand, I'll stand behind it. So once that's settled, then, then we'll get that out there. We'll, uh, we'll teach you that process. And that's a doozy, that one. If this one works, game over. <laughs> okay, it's just, This is major problems if this one works. And it's... Guess what? It's got a real good chance of working because uh, it was thought through. Uh, so that was, and this will be coming from somebody else, another gentleman in California uh, that that uh, has done this process in the past and actually secured. I think he said it was a seven million dollar settlement, which it was, which basically was a lien he got against the uh, a bank, a certain bank. And he, the way he uses the lien, he actually said he prefers having the lien instead of the uh, believing out the money. He was actually to do more with the lien than he was even with the money. And you know, hopefully in time we'll get into that too. But use this stuff here. I mean, go after them. As soon as you get that fraudulent paper in the mail, that, that document's a fraud that they sent you in the mail. As soon as you get that in the mail, go attack them. Go take these affidavits and attack them and knock them out of the box. And like I said, get to know... Uh, look for stuff in your state constitution uh, th that states, or, or even uh, in, in codes and in, in, uh, uh, statutes that state that uh, your state is a uh, court of record. Most uh, courts in your your state are, uh, not most, all, like Pennsylvania says, every court of Pennsylvania is a court of record. See if you have something like that in your state constitution or your, your statutes. Or if it states anything about common law, because they're one and the same, basically. A court of record... A common law court is a part of a court of record. They're, they're, they're sort of hand in hand. You know, you can't have a court of record uh, and have it not be common law. In other words, their statutory courts cannot be considered common law courts. Uh, so that's it for now. I'm going to keep them fairly short. And uh, just, like I said, take it one piece at a time. One tool added to another tool, added to another tool. And when you start to learn this little process, it's all good to puzzle starts to come together for you and then you, you're going to get your own ideas and, and God, you know, I hope you can teach me things and say, what about this? You go, oh, that's a good idea. I never thought of that because there's always people out there to think of different things. You've got to think out of the box and once you give somebody the tools in order to do that, somebody else will take the same tools I'm using and I have figured out ways to use them for myself, but they're going to take the same tools I have that maybe I taught them, and they're going to use it in an entirely different different way that I never thought of, which that's phenomenal, because maybe they thought of something that I never thought of, and wow, that's valuable. You know, we could really do damage with this. So learn the tools and, and get creative and, and think outside the box. So like I said, don't, don't let these people get you down. They're, they're not who they say they are. These people have no authority over you. All they can do is threaten you.